okay. you know Cohen Media, right? Yeah, they're doing the whole Apochino run right now. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, so while cool. the while the Metrograph is doing a Burt Reynolds run. I know, and I went to the Metrograph last night. Actually. Did you? Talk yeah, they, had the, they had the two year anniversary. Oh, oh, that was last night. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, so it was quite interesting. A bunch of filmmakers were there, and yeah. Yeah. It was quite a packed house, you know? Yeah. It was the second year anniversary and some Hollywood types. Were yeah, there. I heard yeah. about the one year anniversary. Mm. Um, well, uh, Andrew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again. Yes. The last time I saw you was on the subway. On the subway. New yeah. Yorkers. Well, I kept, New it Yorkers. had been a few years, right? Three or four years since I sat with you. Probably a good three and three and a half years. Oscilloscope? Yeah. yeah. We were in the office of Oscilloscope, yeah. right? That's right. You have a good memory. And then, but I couldn't. I was like looking across the the, the 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 car, the subway car, and I was looking at, you and I was like, "Is that Andrew?" I couldn't quite. And it's been such a while, I know. a long, long time. And I just said, "Yeah." And I'm always in disguise, you know. Hold a little, hold a little. I'm always in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Beard, no. no beard, bald head, no hair, hair. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then, and then someone sat down uh, next to you who was in kind of like uh, eth- ethnic. I think like uh, a guard. Yeah, you yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember. She, I just met her that you, day. She just, I know, she no, I know. Nice man. She's like, oh, oh, she did. Yeah, no, she just said, "Are you so so?" And I'm like, "Yeah." It's like, "Oh, I saw okay. that." So that's what. And then I just met at that moment. And then you, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna have to be reminded. I see to hold the mic because oh, yeah, you yeah. get very you gesticulate yeah, a lot, yeah, okay. which is a good. I don't want to restrain you at the same okay. time. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that we sound good. Though. Okay. Yeah, so it was very. So I said, you know, I just have a sense that that's that's got to be Andrew. So that's when I I said hello on the mm-hmm. platform. Oh, we got on the same train. I yeah. think we transferred. Yeah, yeah, the two three, the two three. Yeah, yeah. coming from Brooklyn. Indeed, <laughs> <laughs> this is local talk. Venturing for into the Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> And now we're at, you know, these, uh, I do the podcast. This is essentially why I do need to get a place like here because I do this all over the place and, and I'm running around and I really need a central location. Mm-hmm. This so I really should probably yeah, like get a, get a, get a space. Of, or maybe just walk with some, yeah, someone just going when you need to studio or something. A studio. I, I was yeah. thinking of that too. No. You know, I was thinking about that too. The one in the bar- Brooklyn, one in Manhattan, so you can just always alternate, yeah. you know, and just yeah. pay part. I mean, I don't know, make a deal. I'm sure, you know. So, uh, we're looking at the uh, your the page where your film is on the Quad Cinema website, and where where is Kira? Uh, will be having its theatrical in days from now, right? April mm-hmm. April sixth. Sixth. Yeah. So that's like two weeks from today, mm-hmm. right? And I remember as soon as I saw the Sundance slate, I immediately made a note because I wanted to have you back on. So Thank you. it feels good to have you back on. Thank finally. you very much. You're welcome. I enjoyed our talk last time. I don't remember what episode number that was, but I'll, I'll also you. put that from Mother of George. And uh, But I overheard you saying that you started, did you start in documentaries? I mean, yes, I did. Yes. I did. I did. A f- I did one or two documentaries. I uh-huh. was, I started in it. You know, um, I did a documentary um, pff, a while ago called Hot Hions. Called Hot Hands. Hot Hions, like the hot iron comb. You know the comb. Oh yeah, the yeah, air. yeah. The hot iron comb, which really, um, it's a documentary that was set in Detroit, Oklahoma. Basically, I followed. A lot of young black men that are unemployed and um, how they realize that um, actually making hair, it's more profiting than what they've ever had, which is um, working in assembling cars. Mm-hmm. So a lot of it was in Detroit. A lot of them used to work on, on the sure, plants. Sure, when there were jobs. And um, when those plants moved out of the country, um, most of them were unemployed, so they started making hair be, becoming hairdressers and what is and um it's wow. a great documentary i remember winning um we won at Vespaco for it and at toronto um, oh really was that oh, that yeah and um it's called, yeah it was a, it's yeah. quite interesting documentary it's really following this young black man that are hairdressers uh-huh. and how excited they are and making their own products and it's 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 uh it's it's interesting it's flamboyant it's uh mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um was that a feature you was uh, futurette. It was uh, okay. about fifty-seven minutes, right? It's Which just straddles yeah. the mm. line between feature yeah. and short. If I knew what I knew now, I would have probably have just made it ten more minutes longer, and I fell into the feature. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, exactly. You learn these things as you become more and more experienced as a filmmaker that, yes. uh, wait a minute, this may... I mean, actually, you made it broadcast length, I mm-hmm, guess, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It was... And a- it's been amazing. It's been amazingly successful in the sense that, I mean, it's played in so many places and festivals. Right. and I mean, it's been... And it's one of those labor of love and uh-huh. just woke up one morning and wanted to follow these addresses and... Um, uh, because they were just very inspiring to me, seeing all this. Uh-huh. And for me, it was, it was just really interesting doing it that time, which is a long time ago, you know, um, over 15 years now, to think um, the idea of male masculinity, you know, um, that disconstruction, dis- sorry, disconstructing the notion of mas- male masculinity, mm-hmm. you know, as this man that, you know, f- totally... Um, comfortable because they're making hair for women. Um, yeah, they're not making hair exactly, for men. Exactly, comfortable with what they're yeah. doing and right. enjoy it, and they won't trade it for anything else. So after unemployment, you learn to appreciate being in such a uh, opportunity and situation yeah. where Absolutely. you know you don't worry so much about. Absolutely, you know yeah. uh, stigmas like crazy ass stigmas like uh-huh. that. That's not a man's job is to I make yeah. women's hair yeah. exactly. And and it's funny that you mentioned that because. Um, mm-hmm. I just realized that now, as I'm speaking to you, that I actually have this common threat of unemployment in my films. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's my fear of being unemployed, whether it's restless city, about how not getting a job and doing a kind of different job. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Mother of George, she wants to walk. He doesn't want her to walk. Kira, she can't find a job. She wants to walk. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, she spends... I mean, this is the new movie, Where's Kira? It's Where's Kira? Where is Kira? Where is Kira? Where is Kira? Thank you. And uh, it's, you know, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer plays uh, Kira Kira in this film. And she's lost... She finds herself, because I don't want to give away too much, even something that happens relatively early in the film, there's a, a pivotal thing that happens where she finds herself now having to get a job. And it's it's really hard because she here she is a middle aged woman and she really hasn't worked, she doesn't have much to show potential employers and so she starts hitting the pavement looking for work and she really has a hard time. Does this take place a few years ago, mm-hmm. when maybe the economy was in far yeah. worse shape mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. it is even today? And so that's that's a, a tough st- spot to start. She does meet another guy who's been struggling. And uh, kind of just getting out of the, oh, his own personal morass, right? Played by Kiefer Sutherland, and uh, so that's a big change. Though was working with um, name actors, right? This is your first. Was this your first time really making that leap? Um, or did yes, you? You guess, may have done I other work popular, for hire that I don't yeah, know about. So I, I guess you know. popular actors, because I mean they they have worked with people like Zach the Bankale, who is a phenomenal actor you know um, are you sure oh he, yeah of course he was in um yeah mother of george and um, yeah you're right prolific actor and incredible actor and has been doing it for decades and right uh well respected so absolutely it all depends on you know so i'll say popular actors rather than yeah <laughs> you know respectable yeah, yeah. actors well you know in her day michelle pfeiffer was like number one box office star Mm -hmm. this is not necessarily something i don't even think probably she doesn't care so much about at this point but and Kiefer sutherland in his own way at least on television was probably like the number one guy that's a pretty you know that's kind of what they're where they're coming from but they were both seemed like so incredible in this uh you know this film right which is not a studio picture yeah, um, I guess for me it's really about exercising my muscles. Really, um, mm-hmm. you know, you you always want to try things. I think as an artist, uh, yeah. you want to try things you've never done before. Um, I've never really worked with actors of that those calibers and um, what they can bring to what I do. And um, so it's really, you know, experimenting on this canvas. You know, and for me, honestly, it's filmmaking for me, and I hope. We'll always be experimenting and, and yeah. um, working with Michelle and Kiefer. These are well-known actors. Mm-hmm. Um, and how do I bring them into my world? I think that's very important for me. It's not really about um, making films with these well-known actors and end up doing the kind of film you expect them in. Right. It's really actually 
bringing them into my world and being in my fame and that's very important for me for them yeah. to be in my fame i'm not directing them in their kind of films mm. so um that was yeah that was you're bringing them into your world yes yeah i like i like so that, that was interesting uh, yeah bringing them into my world and working with them and and just you can't really say much about things you don't know so you have to witness it and see if you would really enjoy the process of working with actors like that or not yeah, you right know? And it was, you know, it was it was an experience, you know, it was, uh-huh. it was an experience. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret that, but it's okay. But I don't know if either of them have, have, have been in a film like where they're also working at this level, you know, like, and so I think that was, in other words, I think they're stretching their muscles as well. I, and I wonder if that was a, a difficult for them. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'll tell you right now, um, this film is a very low budget and it was very, I mean, very, very, very tough on the actors. It I mean, was. At a point, it was verbally, like, this is just insane because they've never, ever, I mean, Michelle has never, ever done an independent film before, first of all. Um, this is a film that, it's so low. I mean, the budget of this film is probably what? The entire budget is probably, yeah, like probably her salary. T- it's not her. probably what takes care of our, our, our yeah, uh, keeping you know, meaning meaning uh, pff, you know, accommodations and all that stuff. Yeah, he's exactly. no, right, so, of course. Yeah. So it was really tough, you know. I'm 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 really really I must say I was very, I'm very very grateful that she did it. She knew she was um. She knew she, it was going to be tough, but she didn't think it was going to be that tough. You know, this is a film where. You know, there is no, we don't have line of trailers, you know, there's, uh, you know, everybody's working out of small f- storefronts and um, so it was, it, it was tough, you know. And she's deglamorized. Yeah. I mean, I think. Also, but she had, who, who I mean, um, I don't want to, I really don't want to, I guess, spend too much time on it, but it, there, it, I am curious now that we are talking about, because she's deglammed, you know, for this role, she's, mm-hmm. you know. So I guess I'm wondering, you know, was that uh, also something that was like a little scary for her? Or you know, although I th- when I went to the Maryland Film Festival last year, I, I the opening film was um, Barry Levinson's uh, that that movie about uh, you know De Niro and her, and she was cast as some as somebody like ten years older than herself. I was like, what? Well, how could you do that to Michelle Pfeiffer? You know what I mean? Like cast her as somebody who's like well into her, close to 70, close, well into her 60s. It just seemed like, uh, you know, amazing to me that she allowed herself to do. To, I, I thought it was a, you know, for considering it's a it's a big deal. So here I think this was a big deal for her too. And um, I think for me, actually, I don't, I, I think that part was easy because actually I, I must say, and um. She Which was one? Yours? Up for the ch- yeah, I think she was for my film. I think she was really up for the challenge. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, she was excited to do it. Um, I think the difficulty she had on my film is not really about the 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 work itself. Mm-hmm. It's just really on the production part of things. Um, I understand. So, um, so I understand. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So I mean, when it came down to the work, it clearly she was invested in it because I mean, she was she is, phenomenal. She's phenomenal. And if you had never seen a Michelle Pfeiffer, you would never thought of anything other than. This is a an actress who's really willing to take emotional, artistic risks. I mean, she was phenomenal. She came prepared. She was on point. She was. Yeah. I mean, I don't, there's honestly, there's nothing I can say. Um, she just, as far as the craft is concerned, she mm-hmm. was just on point. She was incredible. She came prepared. She, she I learned a lot from her. Um, she was really engaged. She was, you know, it was more of a that collaborative effort. It was just. Uh, the difficulty of shooting in New York, shooting a union film um, with so little budget. Um, it's really tough. You know, union in New York, tiny budget, 18 days, uh, maximum of an eight to 10 hour shoot, shooting days. It was just really, really tough. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's, but as far as the craft, again, she was so invested and she was, she gave it, I mean, you saw the performance, she gave it the best. I mean, yeah. um, she was just brilliant as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Did, what, in the casting, did you see lots of actors or consider a lot of, a lot of actors? Um, it's unique at casting just in terms of both of, even them, both 
together, then they, it works. That speaks to your fine directing. Well, thank you. Um, I mean, I'm not even trying to compliment <laughs> you. It's just plain, it's plainly the truth. I mean, you you have these two actors who I wouldn't have seen as a uh, match. But that then again, probably neither of the other characters would have seen them together either, Mm-mm. right? Yeah, and then I guess um, credit to that would be, I mean, obviously when my da- um, my writer Darcy Pico um, finished the script, um, we talked about it. And obviously, there's, I knew one thing that I didn't want to go for the obvious choices. I mean, there were some great actors that comes to mind right away. Like, wow, they'll be brilliant at playing this, whether it's Childe Swindon or any of those sort of um, interesting, um, adventurous actors. Right, right. Ones who, who, who morph, who are known for morphing into... Absolutely. You know, other... Right, right, right. And... Uh, so that was there, and then I remember my agent talking to my agent, um, John Gavi at CAA, and it was like, uh, "Have you ever thought of this person?" And I'm like, "Wow, that's like left field." Um, first of all, I don't even know she, she was still acting, because I haven't heard of Michelle Pfeiffer in a while, mm-hmm. and he just threw the name out and like, about her? And I'm like, "Fantastic, she'd be brilliant." I mean, she, and for me, it was brilliant because she i wanted someone that the audience could relate to so she's the woman next door which i mean michelle is like the american kind of the all-american household name yeah, right. so and, and they're going to be rooting for her yeah and i think it's very important that you, you that the audience are familiar with that person that way they're able to go on a journey mm-hmm. with that person especially because of who she is and i really want the audience to understand what it's like for people in that situation, um, what life is like and how, what better place but to put yourself in that person or in that place. And Michelle is somebody we know who she is, so we can, you know, we can go on that journey with her and, and rooting for her and realizing, oh my God, this can happen to us, you know? Mm-hmm. This is something that can happen to us. And really, for me, it's really about invisibility as well, you know, um, living in a city like New York where... You know the elderly are very invisible. Um, Everywhere, <laughs> except for you know. I mean, yeah, really, really but you know, yeah. in New York, it's like you don't even want to queue behind it's, them. You think, oh, they can take so long if you stay yeah, right. behind them. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's, it's so all true. the sort of things that yeah. it's actually a very great way to sort of escape. You know, you just become an elderly person and nobody talks to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and what that means in this society, this sort of distance we have. So. That was of interest to me, and mm-hmm. um, talking to her, and she was a really big fan of Mother of George. She liked it very much, and the conversation started, and that's how we all began. Yeah, I, I wonder if, like, though, I don't want to. I know I'm harping on this. Please, please forgive me, Andrew, because this is where my own curiosity comes in, having been married to a an actor myself, and uh, ta- very talented. I didn't know that. I'm no longer married. <laughs> to her anymore but, but we have a child what <laughs> you can say it it's okay don't oh, really you yeah gonna edit? <laughs> depends what you say go ahead i don't, I don't care like, whatever oh, is on your mind oh her name is karen Pittman, and she's okay. right now doing a play in boston but she was on broadway um she's on luke cage she's okay. um I don't she's, watch that she's in disgraced on broadway she was in um she doesn't, you know, it's interesting. She does film, but she it's she does tries first to do theater as much as she can, and she does television. And yeah, she's I'm done. Just curious if it's someone I knew or I've seen. You, you, oh, I, you might have. She's, you know, uh, yeah, she's she's all over. Okay. Um, I'll show you later. But um, anyway, because uh, because I because she tells me how you know there are parts she can't even accept because of course she's on a tr- different trajectory. She's. Mm-hmm. You know, she's not like a kid out of school, but she's, you know, the agent and the man, they, they don't want you to take certain roles because it's not, you know, I guess financially or whatever, you know, profitable to the whole team. And, you know, I can understand the pressure on the actor is what it is, but you don't have to comment on that um, unless you want to. <laughs> but the, the getting to the back to the, the, the point, and that is that whereas Kira, which is opening on uh, April 6th in New York at the Quad Cinema and in Los Angeles, yeah, in Los Angeles, and I think a few other cities as well. Um, we should we should know. Um, that. I'll, I'll make yes. sure to post all that and to make sure. Uh, and you shot in eighteen days, right? Yes. I guess that's not so unusual. Eighteen days, not only eighteen days, but eighteen days with short hours, because obviously, 
You shot um, what? She she was on contract, so she can't work more than certain hours a day. So okay. right. Um, yeah, so it yeah. makes it even shorter. You can't be going into night shoots and <laughs> yeah. over time. Right. <laughs> so you have your 10 hour, 8 to 10 hours a day and that's it. And 18 days. So it was tough. But, uh-huh. you know, and Kiefer, it was done. And, yeah. um, how, was, how was that? How was working with him? I mean, what are you going to say? Um, it's interesting. You know, I think, I think um, I'm, for me, I guess it's really... Again, it's about exercising my craft, and you know, someone like Kifa is an actor that we've seen a certain way. And exactly, how right. do I work with him in a way where it doesn't appear like that? It's a, it's an actor's actor. It's an actor, and I'm like trying to make him this guy next door. So that was uh, it was really about telling him what I want from him, and obviously his take on it is different from mine. So it's always that conversation. It of, was. Uh, that's yeah. great, but right. this is what I like to have or see. Let's try this, and and um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you get to see? It? Did you get to see him seeing the film? Did you get to? Did you watch it with him at Sundance? Um, no, mm-hmm. no. Okay. I think it was shooting um, something for television, some big show. So yeah, it back to yeah, he couldn't. Um, yeah, Could you, you again. It speaks to your your talent as a director because you got a very different version. He's a very, it's a very softened and damaged guy. Uh, you know, not that he wears it on his sleeve. I think he really is extremely compassionate. Also, he's got a big heart in this movie. And these are things you absolutely do not see from Jack, whatever his name is in 19 seasons of, of 24. But, um, huh? what's that? 24. No, the new one. Oh, he's on a new show. Right. Oh, the one where he's like the... Um, President. The, well, yeah, he is... I have never seen it. I, I apologize, but I do know the premise is fantastic, where he's like in the cabinet, but he's like... Right? The cabinet? He or, but he's president. like the 15th person down the line. And it's like after the vice president... If, if the vice president goes and the secretary of state and then the speaker, and then like there's... Basically, four, if you've cleaned out the house. If you complete... Like, they're all wiped out, right? In this in the premise of the of this TV show, they're all wiped out. And he's like the, sure, the secretary of housing housing and right and and but he's the guy urban development <laughs> urban development <laughs> yeah i gotta watch that I, it, I think i definitely want to at least watch the pilot but um anyway yeah press so let's forget about them let's get back to kira <laughs> <laughs> exactly you're right <laughs> is uh yeah well you you are you getting uh are you, is uh, you getting some i mean sundance that's that's helpful Right? Where did Mother of George premiere? I forget now. Sundance. It did too. So, oh, yeah. this is wonderful. Yeah. So you've got yeah, two Sundance, Sundance yeah, back to back. Yeah, yeah. They've been amazing. They've been supportive. Obviously, I went to the Sundance Lab. I don't know if you know about that. I was okay. in Sundance um, Writers Lab and then invited to the Director's Lab with my um, with Darcy. And um, so I've been through that whole process. Um, and When was that? Uh, oh my god, I'm very bad with years. Um, was it after Mother George? Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, it... before, before Where Mother, you... Mother of George was workshopped in Sundance, you know, was workshopped in Sundance, but we didn't get to make the fame. I ended up doing making Restless City, mm-hmm. and then a few I years did later, see Restless City. Now that I remember, I yeah, did, too. and then a few years later, mm-hmm. got to make uh, Mother of George. It's always like that, actually. I've heard that kind of story where you go to Sundance with a script, but that's not the script you end up making. Oh, yeah, because you can't find the money, you can't raise the money. And I think we made Mother of George like I don't know, 10 years or five years later after I workshopped it in Sundance or something uh-huh. like that. Um, yeah. Wow. So the Sundance Lab, for those who don't know, that's uh, when does that take place? Um, the the Writers Lab takes place in January. Okay, that's Just, when the screen. That's when the festival is. No, post pre the festival. Okay, right before. And uh, it's amazing because it basically it's just right after New Year. Uh, few writers are selected to come to the lab um, to develop their project. You mm-hmm. send in a project and. Obviously, you get selected, and about ten to twenty writers are selected to um, come to the lab and work with some well-known screenplay writers and mm-hmm. directors, and that's always amazing. Um, and then uh, 
two weeks there, then you go work on your script <laughs> and um, send it back in. And if they like it, you get selected for the director's lab. And in the director's lab, oh. you get to, in the director's lab, you get to actually workshop few scenes from the film, which is incredible. So basically, you shoot in a f- scene that happens on Flatbush in Brooklyn, mm. in the woods of Utah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the entire world is in that lab, right? Because there are filmmakers from all over the world over the showing world. their footage or their well, scene, no, working, their on scene, their scenes, working on their yeah. scenes. So, yeah. so it's, it's incredible. I mean, I could not imagine um, my trajectory as a filmmaker without Sundance. Um, right. Yeah. Um, they've been immensely, immensely supportive of my career. Yeah. And um, I hold them a lot to that. <laughs> well, you, you, they also recognize an artist, and uh, you know it. Uh, and I'm, I, you know, I can understand it. It's like a, the it, it, I, one of the things I've, 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 you know, why I do have a passion for cinema is because of all the different uh, voices, you know, and uh, styles that are are out there. And so it's great to know that a place like Sundance, which is like this, you know, com- commercial, huge, successful festival, it's so it's so important festival for so many filmmakers, but that their priorities are that way. Exactly. And they've got, film- I mean, we're talking about filmmakers from around the world. This uh-huh. is the world, you know, it's not just American filmmakers. No, no, right. I am half Niger- you know, Nigerian. Uh, there's filmmakers from Iran, from Saudi Arabia, sure. from Korea. Sure. I mean, it's the world cinema. Right. It's not just American cinema. Right. It's sort of like the go out there and find these young filmmakers that have a voice and they invite them over and to support the program. Mm-hmm. They support them and, you know, um, find ways to get the films made. Um, um, sometimes find finances. I mean, they're just so helpful. Um, it's just an incredible lab. So um, I urge a lot of young filmmakers to, to definitely submit. investigate and submit. Yeah. Well, I've been talking to Andrew DeSumo here again, and the film is called Where is Kira? And it stars Kiefer Sutherland, Michelle Pfeiffer. Who else should we mention that's... Um, Babs Olakuni um, is in a... Um, you're going to know more about him. He's in the new um, series that's coming out on Amazon, mm-hmm. directed by... Um, What's his name that did um, that did Drive? Oh yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, Refn. Yeah, Refn, yeah. right? Just Nicholas something. Nicholas Winding Refn. Yeah, and it's yeah, it stars Babs. Right, I heard uh, about this. Shimokun and um, um, Tony Okumboa. Um Tony Okumboa has been in most of my films. Uh-huh. He's in Restless City, playing the kingpin. Is in um, uh-huh. Mother of George, playing the younger brother that impregnated. Oh, I son of a bitch. I meant to bring my copy too. I have a copy. Oh. I was gonna bring it and have you sign it. Okay, no worries. You can always we'll do it get again. me to do that. Um, <laughs> I just like to have it like that. I don't know. It gives me something to um yeah, to, to enjoy. Tony Hungboa that plays the younger brother in the uh-huh. world of George and is here too, playing the detective. Uh-huh. Oh right, right, yeah. right. I, I was gonna guess if that's yeah. who it was. I love the film. I, I just want to say it was a, a pleasure to see it, and I was really looking forward to seeing it. Thank and while you. I saw it at home, and I'm not recommending anybody oh, do that. Oh, no. You saw it at home? Well, this part's getting edited out, clearly. No, you need to definitely back see to it on the big screen. I will. Oh, my goodness. The whole my home screen, though, is, is nice, but it doesn't matter. I, you, know, you don't get the... You, first of all, you get the audio, the sonic mm-hmm. and uh, side of it. You get the bigger screen. You get an audience, mm-hmm. which you're all feeling it together and, and experiencing it together. And, and and you'll be there at the quad this weekend. Yes, next next week, weekend. Excuse me, on this six. When I post this, yeah. it'll be this weekend though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I put this podcast, Fantastic. and it's written by uh, Saint what, what this Darcy Pico. Darcy Pico, who also wrote Mother of George, George or co wrote. Yeah. And it's uh, we know it's shot by uh, Bradford uh, Bradford Young Young Bradford, who's uh, we're going to get on the podcast. Uh, he's probably listening. And who edited the film? I'm a- very important. Oriana Sadu. Oriana is um, Oriana Sadu. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. basically edited everything I've made. Everything. Um, from Hot Irons to Restless City to Mother of George. Okay. And this as well. Brilliant. She's a brilliant editor, and um, I've been working with her for for I guess decades now. So fortunate. Wow. 
It's great you have a shorthand with these yeah. guys. You know, I understand. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is, is, do we leave anything out that we should talk about? Um, or did, did I? You know, uh, no, that's it. That's, did that's I do right? It's so nice to sort of uh, have a conversation with someone you know, and and I agree. They get the fame and yeah, all that. It's um, then thank you very much for being a great, great um, theme lover. Film lover, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, keep making good films, and and I'll keep having you on. Thank you. Now you can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs>